Okay, we're back for um, the next part of this lesson on Clostridium. I'm comparing Clostridium tetani to Clostridium botulinum. Okay, I'm back again. That was my dinner timer going off. Sorry, a lot of distractions tonight. Um, okay, so back to what we were talking about. Um, uh, Clostridium botulinum is a gram-positive um, endospore a rod endospore former and so just like um, Clostridium tetani you know it's gonna look like this well, sort of and it is going to produce a neurotoxin just like uh, Clostridium tetani does but its neurotoxin binds to different synapses so we're gonna look at this picture again and we're going to say okay this is um, the axon and it's coming to a skeletal muscle so this is in the peripheral nervous system. Oh good, I'm using, I'm doing it better with my highlighter this time. So we take those synaptic vesicles, put it green, for, and then put the orange neurotransmitters inside of them. And then over here, these are the receptors for the neurotransmitters. So normally they would go across. Normally this axon would release neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. They would bind to the skeletal muscle and make it contract. But look, the neurotoxin is blocking. So here's the neurotoxin blocking that synaptic release just like it did over here by the organism Clostridium tetani. So in both cases, you end up with, bam, no transmission. So this time though, if this neuron is supposed to make this muscle contract and you block it, you have different symptoms, right? This time, instead of lockjaw, we have paralysis. And the scary um, thing that can become paralyzed with this, so you think, oh, that's terrible, I'd be paralyzed. Well, it can lead to um, respiratory arrest. Now my dog is drinking water. Uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, this one is um, notable because the endospores that are made by Clostridium botulinum can germinate in improperly canned food. So if the food gets sealed up and there were endospores of botulism in the canned food, then they can actually germinate inside of the can because it's an obligate anaerobe and so it can live inside of the can and in fact it thrives. Indeed, if the can were opened, it would not be able to thrive. And another interesting tidbit here is Botox. Botox is an injection um, that people might get to um, lessen their wrinkles, but what they're actually doing is injecting this toxin into their skin so it's not going systemically and it's not going to um, cause paralysis, but instead it will paralyze the facial muscles that when we um, that can cause wrinkles over the time, you know, like smile lines and things like that. Okay, so we've compared Clostridium tetani and Clostridium botulinum. I would say take-home messages for you are Clostridium, along with Bacillus, they're the only medically significant gram-positive endospore formers that I'm familiar with. So I think if you remember that, Clostridium and Bacillus are your endospore formers, then you are um, doing good. It's an obligate anaerobe, which means that it's not going to thrive in any time that there's oxygen. And that's why somebody's not going to get tetanus unless they have, let's say, a puncture wound. So um, over here, I said that Clostridium botulinum is common in improperly canned food. Tetanus would be common 
in puncture wounds, especially if the nail, the rusty nail, for example, had been in the soil where lots of these endospores live. The things that these have in common is that both tetanus and botulinum have a neurotoxin that stops the release of synaptic vesicles, but they act on different neurons. So in this case, the neuron that it acts on would normally say, hey, don't contract so much. But since that voice goes away, doom, doom, then instead we end up with lockjaw, rigor, cramping, too much contraction. Over here, the, the neuron is acting on a skeletal muscle. So it stops the skeletal muscle from contracting and can result in paralysis. As I said, the really scary part here is that it could result in respiratory arrest, rest if the diaphragm is the muscle that is paralyzed.